everybody. Welcome back to The Hobby Musician. You're joining us today for the thrilling conclusion of a mini series where I'm going through and showing you how you can create a high quality mobile recording setup using nothing more than a Line 6 Helix and an iPad. Well, in our previous two episodes, we talked about how you can set up the Helix to accept the maximum number of independent signals. In our second episode, we then showed you how to set up a recording session in GarageBand on an iPad to handle all of those incoming signals. And today, I'm going to hit the road and take all of this stuff and meet up with my band and put it into practice. Now, we've got a rehearsal scheduled for a couple days from now, so when we fade to black and come back, you're going to see us set up, ready to rehearse, ready to record. So, I'll see you back in just one second. Hey everybody, we made it! We're all set up here and ready to record, but before we do that, I've got to introduce you to the band. So, playing keyboards, we have none other than Mr. Fancy Fingers himself. It's Craig Levers. Say hi, Craig. Hey, hello. And on drums, we have the Rhythm King of the Eastern Seaboard. It is Michael Schubert. I've got a nickname. Yes, you well, do. Well, I don't think I'm good enough to have a nickname, but I'll well, take one. You absolutely are. <laughs> and so like we've been saying in our episodes, we are all set up here. We've got our four signals. We have two microphones, one uh, on the bass drum and one for the overheads. They're running into the Helix. Craig's keyboard has a direct line into the Helix, and then my bass is the fourth signal. You can also see we've got our session set up in GarageBand, so there's only one thing left to do. I'm going to get this going, and when it counts us in, you can see right there we're recording. So, Shuby, why don't you go ahead and kick us in, and let's play. Three, two, three, four. Okay, everybody, we are back here at home base. I've collected up all the tracks. We performed the song and practiced it a few times, did a couple of takes, and I took all of that recording back here to the studio. And what you can see now is the session um, that I'm going to use to demonstrate the difference. We said at the very beginning of this entire mini series, the point of a project like this, or the point of a rig like this, is to improve upon just the, the tried and true method of putting out some sort of phone or tablet and just doing one audio recording of an entire room. So what you can see on the screen right now is a comparison. I imported the raw audio file of the phone as we were recording and you saw the video down here in the bottom track and you can see I've muted everything else. So all you're going to hear is I'm just going to play back the audio portion of the recording, which will kind of set the baseline for what we're trying to improve upon. So if you just kind of listen to what we've got, this, this is the sound of just like a single recording of the room. Okay, so you can kind of see you've got some of the sound there, and this is a technique that people use all the time. It's quick and it's easy, but now I want to show you what you can then do with this mobile setup. As you can also see just visually, now as I start to kind of mute this and turn on the other things, just looking at the screen, you can kind of start to see the benefit of isolating out different parts uh, of this band. You can see just for the drum tracks in particular, the bottom two, look at the kick drum and look at the overheads. Look at that repeating pattern and the clarity of those things. What you just heard, you know, you could hear the drums, you could hear the keyboards, but kind of it sounds like it was all in a box. It sounds muddy, it sounds muffled. But the clarity of capturing each thing individually really comes through when you isolate signals and you put them into you know the the interface like the iPad. So just real quick, I want to I just want to play um, a, a quick snippet so you can kind of hear the difference here. So here we go with the mixed and I, I adjusted the levels and really used the um, software's capability. Um, so here's what it sounds like now.
right there already. You've got the clarity, you know, there's there's less of the boominess of the room and having the ability to bring up things and bring down things, uh, levels of, of uh, volumes, is incredibly helpful in, in crafting a much better sounding track. Now, I will point out some, some drawbacks, some things that we learned during that session. You know, to make this even better, you're gonna have to play with things like microphone placement. Um, I'll show you here. If you look at the screen, the um, you can see the the size, the gain, or the the volume of the kick drum. But then, if you look at the size of the overhead drums, it turns out that we didn't actually have the microphone placed very well, and we were in a rush to get started. I wanted to show you all um, the technique, so we just placed some microphones and hit record. And that's kind of also, I guess, something in favor of this technique that even with a rushed job, you can still get something pretty good. So we would go back later and mess with the adjustment. We would place that microphone better so that we would capture more signal and not, and I wouldn't have had to um, run the, the volume all the way at the top just to barely hear those overhead uh, mics. Same thing with the keys and the bass. We found out later that we could have done a little bit more to optimize the amount of signal we were sending out. My bass was sending out a lot of signal, so I needed to bring that down, and Craig's keyboard was sending out just about the right signal. So those are some kind of tips and techniques that you can um, use or have in your mind as you use this and set this up for your own um, applications. All right, well, with that kind of um, comparison in the books, you can kind of hear the difference in sound and the um, final product that this rig gives you. Let's get the camera switched up and we'll go ahead and close out this video. Well, there you have it, everybody. We made it to the end of our mini series showing you how you can put together a really flexible and really mobile recording rig using nothing more than your Line 6 Helix and an iPad. Well, I hope you got something out of this and I thank you for watching. And as always, until next time, play on, my friends. Play on.